All right, let me go through these comments and God help me, okay? So, first of all, BRL says the audio is still distorted. Back the mic just a little and turn down the volume. Nice song. All right, so I don't, you know, I don't know if you mean my mic. Uh, I, you know, just a couple of weeks ago I was told my audio was too low, so I turned up the audio or turned up the, the mic and... Uh, Hopefully it's loud enough, but if it's too loud, I can try to find a happy place. It's odd because for me, everything sounds normal. It's hard for me to tell. It's just, it's, it's, it's probably too hard for me to explain, but if any advice like this, it's greatly appreciated. BRL says, Bumpy Earth, that means blind people can enjoy it too. That's right. Absolutely. Robo for Jesus Christ says so true regarding uh, Lucifer which of course if you saw that I make it very simple very clear that if you're reading a perverted Bible if you're not reading the true Word of God which is the King James Bible you might notice that they've completely removed the Lord or uh, sorry they've completely removed Lucifer and they've turned Lucifer into the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, it's insanity, but that's what they've done. It's clear as day. It's a problem. And you think about how popular the name Lucifer is, and then to open up your perverted Bible and to see that it's not there, that's odd. That should raise some red flags to you right away. All right, God help me. Uh, no, not this one. It's going to be the next one that's going to... Here, let's read this first. If you want everlasting life, there is only one thing any person can do in this day and age of, dis, of the dispensation of grace. And that is to read or hear the message from God preached from his authorized book in the English as authorized King James. The King James is not a version. I'm going to keep repeating that until somebody gets it. The King James Bible is the Bible. It's the pure word of God in the English language. The first four chapters of the book of Romans and then at this time I say declare the righteousness of God. God will know you are reading from his book and he will know when you declare his righteousness. When you do that, God can be just and justified to impute his righteousness on you a believer in Jesus, a believer in the right word of God. Okay, right, so when, uh, you know, when we believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, the Spirit of God is comes upon us. It's not by what we do, but what is done, what has been done for us and what is done for us. Not by our righteousness, but by His righteousness righteousness only God can enable a person to experience moral compunction uh, I don't know what that word is I'm not very smart so that they can turn back to him which is what it means to repent well I, I turn back to him suggests that you were once in him so I would have a little bit of issue of the wording there all right, but I, I get the idea. To repent is to go from unbelief to belief, to turn, to feel sorrow and regret um, that you are, you know, real simply, it. once you realize that you're not perfect, you're nowhere near perfect, and you can't do it yourself, once you realize that, in my experience, um, you need a savior because you you know that you're wrong and that you can't be right. And but Jesus Christ is right, and that He's the only one that can save you. Right? That's that's the good news. Right? Without Him, you're nothing. After you read every word of Romans, chapter one and hear what God has to say to you about Jesus and you and the world 
You can feel sorry for all the sins you knowingly and un unknowingly committed throughout your life. That allows you, if you choose, to turn back to God. I would remove the word back because it, su it just su suggests that you were saved, lost your s salvation, and then you came back to salvation. All right. it's, I'm nitpicking, that's all. Then you can put your trust in Jesus and have faith that his shed blood is appropriation for your lifetime of sin and the sins of the whole world and being fully persuaded just like Abraham that God who cannot lie will do everything he has promised at this time I say declare with your lips the righteousness of God and he will know he will immediately forgive your past present future sins and come and make a home in you he'll abide in you that's right he wants to manifest the life of Jesus in your body and he will do it you're spot on right there that is what you must do to get justified well, what you must do is believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and saved by God Romans 3 is your proof Romans 3 24 through 26 being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus whom God has set forth to be appropriation through faith in his blood to declare his righteousness for the remission of sins the cancellation of sins that are past through the forbearance of God to declare I say at this time his righteousness that he might be just and the justifier of him which believes in Jesus then continue your reading what I got a book here then continue your reading of his word in the authorized King James Bible in chapter 5 as a fully justified and saved person therefore being justified by faith we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ by whom also we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God you must use God's real book you must look it's it, just like it's about faith and believing in the Lord Jesus Christ it's about faith that you know when he was on it when you know when he was on, uh, on earth and he knew that they were going to come and get him and kill him he had faith so you know Abraham had faith Noah had faith so also must we have faith and if you have faith you ought to have faith in the Bible that you hold in your hands you believe God can resurrect you and others from the dead but can't give you a perfect pure word of God in your language man, I, I don't know about your God if that's what you believe you ought to have faith man because I'm telling you when it when it all comes to an end we're gonna find out that we had a perfect Bible that we had that everything written in the Bible is gonna be true and when I when I say Bible I mean King James Bible all right, and you're going to find out all these phony perversions were there to deceive us. And we were warned that this would happen. Okay, anyway. No, you're spot on with this. Good stuff here. Uh, you must use God's real book in English. When you read him, he reads you back. Yeah, as you're reading the Word of God, the Word of God is reading you. That's exactly right. And, man, I, re I realize that. Uh, you know, I've told this many times that back in, I think it was 1996, 1995, 96, uh, it had to have been 1995, so I, I got my hands on a Bible and I started reading uh, the book of John, and I was going to read it and prove it wrong, and the, the way I figured it is that if I'm going to argue against the church and against the Bible, I, get, I better know what the Bible says. Right? I mean, you can't, you don't have a honest argument against the Bible if you don't know what the Bible says. So I started reading it to find errors in the Bible, and what happened was the Bible found errors in me. So I agree with you 100% there. It reads you back. There is only one, the Word of God, in any particular tongue, and in English, the pure Cambridge edition. Okay, yep. Yeah. Uh, if you want to get nitpicky about exactly what edition, that would be my recommendation too. 
All right, the authorized King James Bible is perfect and pure in word, punctuation, capitalization, but any good authorized King James Bible will suffice for doctrine, reproof, and correction. For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Paul does not wait until 1 Corinthians chapter 15, and Paul does not wait until Romans 10 to tell us all nations what we need to hear so that we can declare the righteousness of God and be justified and saved by him in 15 minutes. God made it simple. God made it easy to get saved. God made it so anyone can do what I have shown you above. Anyone can get saved if they listen and hearken. God says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. You're exactly right. So let's let me get two verses here to if I can remember. To support uh, that comment there, uh, the law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. Right? That's making wise the simple. So, uh, simple, if you look at, if you think of simple as somebody like dumb, like me, and, you know, the Word of God makes the, makes me wise it's not because I'm wise it's because the Word of God is wise all right because I'm a big dummy so now what happens is deceivers come in and they try to make everything complicated and it's not complicated like our friend says here in his comment it's simple it's easy all right in 2nd Corinthians 11 but I fear lest by any means as a serpent beguiled Eve through a subtlety so your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. Simple. Just like our friend says here. Good job. Now, here's, here's an example of a, you know, I, I don't know if I want to say a deceiver, but somebody who is deceived, who has been deceived themselves. So he's saying the book of John was written to the Jew. Well, <laughs> all right, so I don't, you know, don't read the book of John. For crying out loud, it's not for you. Just disregard everything that's written in the book of John, according to the real ST. So this is like a, a polar opposites right here. we got one guy saying it's all simple, and this guy saying, oh, the book of John was written to the Jew. Okay, well, that's simply not true. It's completely ignorant. And what you're all you're doing is saying, don't read it. Don't read the book of John. You know, it's not for you. Totally disregard it. And it, it, it's completely nonsensical. Makes no sense at all. And it's as if that person has never read the book of John. And I'm telling you, if I were to give advice to somebody that's never read the Bible, I would tell them to start in the book of John. That's what was told to me, and it, it worked. Oh, what am I doing? see I need to read the Bible myself because I okay so in Matthew 21 therefore I say unto you the kingdom of God shall be taken from you talking about the Jews and given to a nation talking about uh, the Christian nation bringing forth the fruits thereof all right so the this idea that you know the book of John is for Christ rejecting Jews it's for everybody all right and you go to my Facebook you'll see uh, I put this boldly what I say unto you I say unto all see I am I gonna get it Mike mark 13 verse 37 and what I say unto you I say unto all watch what Jesus says, whether it's Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, anywhere, the Old Testament, New Testament, you know, when in the Old Testament, when God is speaking, you know who it is? It's Jesus. All right? It's Jesus. It's always been Jesus. Now, 
when he says, what I say unto you, I say unto all, watch. It's going to pan out this way. It's going to pan out. You're going to find out whether you realize it now or later. The truth is going to prevail. And we're going to find out everything that the Bible says is true. The Bible is 100% true. The King James Bible. So, uh, you know, just completely ignorant. So, I, I don't know what to tell you, buddy. You can expound upon that. We can have a discussion on that. But there's nothing... I can't, you know, point to a Bible verse and say, "Hey, you're right," because it's not in the Bible at all. All right, we could go to, you know, Revelation two nine, I guess. Revelation three nine, either one. I know thy works in tribulation and poverty, but thou art rich. And I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews, and are not, but are the synagogue of Satan. And you go to like Romans two. I guess maybe we go here. Uh, he's not a Jew, which is one inwardly, in the circumcision of the heart, but is in the spirit, and not in a letter whose praise is not of man, but of God. Uh, if I could expand, I want to get both those verses here. Let's do it this way. For he is not a Jew, which is one inwardly. I'm sorry. Excuse me. I apologize. For he is not a Jew, which is one outwardly. Neither is that circumcision which is outward in the flesh. But he is a Jew which is one inwardly, and circumcision is that of the heart, in the spirit, and not in the letter, whose praise is not of men, but of God. Now this circumcision, that after the eighth day that was told of, uh, instructed to uh, Abraham, this was not the true circumcision. It never was the true circumcision. It was just a... Uh, representation or a, you know a symbolic or what, however you want to look at it um, we read here in Deuteronomy it, it even tells us in the book of Moses circumcise therefore the foreskin of your heart and be no more stiff necked it never was about the, the actual physical work of cutting off the flesh now uh, when we are born of the Spirit of God or that means our heart is circumcised. Now, when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven, he will forever cut off the flesh, and we will be clothed in, a, in an incorruptible, immortal flesh. So this flesh that we have now is going to be cut off completely and forever. It will be 100% fulfilled upon the return of our Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, so... Okay, so uh, I appreciate the comment. Now, if you want to continue, you know, elaborate on that, you know. It's like, don't just say that. It's like a drive-by shooting. You drive by, shoot some bullets in a, in a window, and then keep on driving. Let's talk about it. Because I want you to understand, right? I want us to reason one with another. Franklin Watson. My 1599 Geneva Bible has the same as the... King James. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure he's referring to um, uh, Isaiah 14, verse 12. It says Lucifer, right? And I'm not for sure. I would have to go to another. See this Geneva. There. Hey, it's right there. All right, so let's take a look. Let's take a look at this real quickly since we're on the subject. Let's do it this way. Add, can we add a parallel to this? There we go. English Standard Version. Take, it removes the word Lucifer. This is the only verse in the entire Bible that says Lucifer. And they've removed it. And they've replaced it with Jesus Christ, who is the day star. Who gives us the day star, which is eternal life. All right, so we're going. What are we looking for? Geneva 1599 how art thou fallen from heaven O Lucifer son of the morning and cut down to the ground which did cast lots upon the nation which did weaken the nation so uh, the 1611 King James Bible is a purification of the English Bibles before it right so 
so you could argue that uh, the 1599 was not uh, was not in error necessarily, but it was it needed cleaned up, and it was cleaned up in in a, in a number of places. But you'll notice that a lot of uh, what is written in the Geneva Bible is echoed exactly in the King James Bible. So, uh, for perfection's sake, I would say stay with the King James Bible. But thanks for that comment. You're exactly right. All right. Oh, we've got a lot of comments here. And another book. That's all right. I want to know your thoughts on this. Let's go through it. Amen, brother, as everything is a life. Is that a misspell? Let's see. It's like humanity is watching a live film with real actors all playing out their roles and they don't even know it. These Freemasons working for the Pope of Rome have infiltrated every country now. Now whether you want to call them Freemasons or Jesuits, that's okay. The idea is, is exactly right. and it's, it's not a new idea. It's something that they've been doing since the very beginning. They've inf infiltrated every country now. What? Yeah, now. Now is in for a long time now, and um, their dominance is getting more, is growing. And people are asleep and not seeing it, and they're thinking, oh, uh, Ronald Reagan is the Antichrist. Yeah, no, they are. That's what, the, you know, because of these, I think, because of these Jesuits are entertaining these ideas, or, or not, maybe not entertaining, but introducing these ideas of anything and everything except the truth so t people will buy the fantastic and e ignore the truth and that's because they love darkness rather than the light now and so this is what we're seeing in the world and this is the way it's supposed to happen so it's really hard really really uh, really hard for a believer um, to know the truth when there's so many lies out there it really is then that's that's part of what I've been saying is the tribulation that we're going through right now it is very difficult especially for our children to go through a public school system and to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ because everything in the world is is uh, slanted against Jesus Christ and the truth I mean, think about this. You, 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 do they teach the Ten Commandments in the public school system? Why not? How, who, who could be against the Ten Commandments? That's insanity. But they don't teach it. Instead, they teach how to put a condom on a banana. That's important. The Ten Commandments aren't important. But putting a condom on a banana is important, apparently. It's insanity. The world has gone insane, and it, but it's happened so gradually people don't see it and you, do, you don't really see it until you come completely out of it all right and like i i pointed this out yesterday and i, I just love this verse here in first john 2 i think 16 15 give or take love not the world neither the things that are in the world if any man love the world the love of the father is not in him for all that is in the world the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world passes away, and the lust thereof. But he that doeth the will of the God abideth forever. So the things of this world are absolutely dirty and corrupt, and it's harder and harder for um, anybody to get saved. And then once you are saved, it's hard to find the truth. And that's why I encourage people, just read the Bible. Forget about what I'm teaching forget about what anybody else is teaching just read and believe the Bible believe the Bible at, you start from that's where you want to start start with that Bible that you hold in your hands and believe in it you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ right well believe also the Bible that you hold in your hands All right, let's continue the TV is nothing more than a modern-day spellcasting machine that fools the public into this left and right thinking that's right if you're it's a tornado that goes left to right left to right spins and spins and spins it's a whirlwind and if you get into it you get sucked into it and um, it's hard to get out right um, but it'll spit you out one way or the other so uh, that's why I say look they're they're 
they're wicked on the left, they're wicked on the right. You're, you know, left wing, right wing, it's still the same animal. It's the same creature, the same beast. Where the people think they have a choice when they vote. People believe the film and think it's real, but it's a lie. Nuclear weapons, a lie. You know, global warming, acid rain, ozone layers, AIDS, mad cow, COVID, monkeypox. Uh, it, yeah, that's what they're selling on TV, isn't it? I mean, that's what, look. Yeah, also, yeah, anytime you watch TV, the, you got these commercial after commercial saying, well, yeah, if you're not, you know, sleeping right, or if you're having, you know, relationship troubles, or if you're, you know, maybe you, you stand up and you're dizzy or whatever, you know, going to the bathroom or whatever, anything, everything and anything that, that everything that happens in your life, well, they got a pill for it, make you feel better. Well, this pill might kill you. And they even tell you this might lead to death, but they sell it like this is so fantastic. And they got a pill for that. You need a, you want a pill? We got a pill. And what they're doing is selling fear. And the same thing with the news. Oh, you got, you know, uh, all this wickedness in the world, and um, and all they do is sell. It's it's like this. What happened a couple of years ago? All they're doing, people are dying left and right. They're showing you images and videos and all this and that and talking. And they got the experts on there saying we're all going to die if we don't do this. They're selling fear on that television. And so our friend here calls it spell casting, a spell casting machine. And that's exactly right. I mean, they're trying to cast a spell on people to get people to, to be afraid. But what's the Lord Jesus Christ say? He says, fear not, right? Be not afraid. And we go to, what is that? Let's see how far off I am. Let's see. Oh, I'm way off, ain't I? Every time. It's like I, I have no idea what the Bible says. I'm probably still wrong, ain't I? No idea. There it is. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you. Not as the world gives, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. P Jesus wants us to have peace. You turn on that television, they'll scare you to death. And hopefully they'll scare the hell out of a bunch of people, right? If they scare the hell out of them, then they'll come to the Lord Jesus Christ. That really... All right, so you know you're right. The moon landing is another. I mentioned this yesterday, I believe, that uh, it's been over 50 years since anybody's went to the moon. Um, what, is it going to take you another 50 years? What are they going to say after it's been a hundred years and nobody's been to the moon? Uh, so, you know, I'm telling you, this is a lie. This is a very bad lie, and uh, usually. You know, once the gig is up, something very bad happens. Uh, you know, it's like a, a husband that lies to his wife, and he keeps he carries the lie out until he can't carry it out no more. And so, what happens? He kills the wife. So, what do we have here? We have a nation that is carrying out this lie for a long time. And what are they gonna do? Uh, really, they're getting exposed right now. And what happens in another 20 years? Man, the gig is up. What are they going to do? Um, something is wrong. Something is very wrong. Alright. Google Plane, take pictures, satellite, evolution, aliens. Yeah, so that's the thing. That's one big reason why I'm against the idea of beings in outer space. Whether you want to call them beings in heaven if you want to call them fallen beings whatever I'm all I'm against all of it there are no UFO aliens there are no beings in outer space or in heaven none of that stuff UFOs are not real it's all part of the evolution theory and that you're a super monkey and there are super monkeys super super monkeys in the, in the air it's all nonsense it's all science fiction but that's you know that's what I that's what I was saying earlier. It's so hard for children 
today because there are so many lies out there. Yeah, and uh, you know, I've heard people say that, oh, the Bible's just written to control people. Yeah, but it, I've heard people that have never read the Bible say that. And, oh, I used to read the Bible all the time when I was six years old. Yeah, no. No, you didn't. All right, they want to convince the world what that we need a world army to protect us. Right, so that's what they're selling on TV is that we don't need Jesus Christ. Just put all your trust and faith in political leaders. They'll save you. We got all the medicine for you. We got all the answers, all the solutions for every problem that you see on TV, every problem that they create, they have a solution for it. They're going to save you. That's what they're selling. They're selling fear, and by default, your only hope is to put it in them, the political leaders. That's what they're selling on TV, and that's what I'm. That's why I'm saying the mark of the beast is those that are putting their trust in political leaders and it's not just in one country it's all over the world they use uh, their lies to scare us into taking their poisonous yeah exactly you yeah, take the poison now i don't i don't believe the poison will hurt us at all I mean, theoretically, you could take, uh, you know, a gallon of, uh, you know, uh, what's that, s rat poison stuff, and just guzzle it, and it will not kill your soul. There's nothing that can harm you. You're saved, sealed, secure forever. My advice would be don't drink a gallon of, you know, rat poison nor listen to those people on TV and take their uh, venom that they're selling. Right? I'm not sure about the... You know, the martial law isn't... They can do that anytime they want. Right? They also wanted to use this fear to give them a license to implement martial, the martial law. They can go into anybody's houses at any time. They don't need a worldwide martial law. Uh, it, they've already got it. They go door to door. And they're not going to jab. They're not going to go door to door and jab everybody. It's, that's never going to happen. It's impossible. But they can go door. To, they can walk into your house right now, and go through your entire house. And for whatever reason they want, you know, they can make up whatever they want. And it's already going on. But they're not going to come in and take your gun away. People will give up their guns, and they're not going to come in and stick you with their pins and needles. That's never going to happen. And you might let them, you know. You might, you know. It, look, you know, it's like uh, a lot of people let these things happen to them. It's like uh, if you take your car to a mechanic, he's going to find something wrong with your car. If you go to the hospital and say, "Oh, this." I was watching TV and they said if your elbow hurts every time you lift it up, you should go see a doctor. It's this this new disease out there, and I need some pills. Well, they're gonna, yeah, they're gonna. Hell, they'll cut their your arm off if you know whatever whatever you let them do, they're gonna do it. My so my advice is stay away from that. Just. Put your faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. All right. So, uh, pandemic, alien attack. Now, I would be a little bit curious, maybe even concerned. Are they gonna? Are they gonna try to send a missile and claim it's from an alien? Try to kill some people that way? You know, there won't be a full-on alien invasion, but there could be an alien encounter, and that would dramatically affect the whole world. I don't think they can do it, though. I've wondered that for a long time now. Where are they going with this idea of UFO aliens? They're going somewhere, and it's not good, because it's a lie. There are no aliens, but they keep pushing it. And they keep pushing it and keep pushing it. And people are wanting desperately to believe in little green men from Mars. So they might have a plan for something. Watch out. 
Well, I, you know, I'm not, I'm not convinced. I think this, this sticking, you know, giving you the snake venom. I think this is over. It might come back in the future, but I think it's over. I really do. I don't want no part of it anyway. To hell with them. They want us trapped, monitored, and tracked. They, they have us monitored. They have us tracked. They, they know everything that we're doing. It's like if you're concerned that you might be on their list, you can stop worrying, okay? Because you're on the list, guaranteed. Anyone who won't play ball, uh, yeah, I'm roller to cut off wild animal wild. See, there are too many rules and regulations. I agree with all that. They're programming us now to watch New World Order programs. Oh, I don't watch any of that stuff. I have no idea of any of that stuff. Uh, but you're, I mean, if you're not a, if you, that's, that's going to be appealing to some people. You might be right. I don't know. I don't pay attention to that stuff. They want us to get used to being filmed both inside and outside of our homes. Yeah. Well, the benefit, to be fair, the benefit of having all the cameras everywhere and to being monitored everywhere and everything that you do, it's it's going to deter criminal behavior. And then any time a criminal act is committed, they're going to be able to figure out who did it. That's the benefit. All right. Um, I just I'm just glad I'm not one of those people that are uh, monitoring people. Right. Now being a detective would be cool. Right. To find out who the bad guy is that would be great and they got tools today that they've never had before and it's amazing and it's there for good um, the obvious concern that we all have is are they using it uh, are people going to use it for evil and I'm sure that's happened and it's happening you think about uh, you know uh, back in the day I guess uh, you know, if you had, if you were, you were a jealous boyfriend, you go drive by your girlfriend's house and you look, you look, you know, are there any strange cars around? That sort of thing. Well, nowadays, um, you could, uh, how do I say this? Uh, theoretically, you can, you can have access to uh, cameras, to f cell phone data. You can put a tracking device on people's v vehicles. So if you were uh, uh, psychotic boyfriend or whatever you could uh, you know put put a uh, you know trace somebody's phone right so when anytime your girlfriend leaves her house you, you can you can know about it and or you could put a tracking device on her vehicle that sort of thing and then sort of stalk her and follow her around that sort of thing I mean so if you're looking for a bad guy and you want to figure out where the bad guy's at or where he's going that sort of thing those, those tools are great, but if you're doing it uh, for insane purposes, like stalking your girlfriend, that's where it's bad. That's where it's concerning. So there's a good side and a bad side to it, and evil people are going to do evil things. There's no question about it, but the, the availability or the, the possibilities are uh, greater than ever before. It's both good and bad. So we read here like in Daniel 12. Uh, many shall go to and fro, and knowledge shall be increased. Now, I thought it was in Daniel 12. I don't know nothing. Man. Oh, right there it is. Many shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall be increased. Talking about uh, leading up to the end time. Right, so that sort of follows exactly what we're seeing, and exactly the concern. I understand the concern, right? All this... Uh, monitoring that's going on it's it's good and it's bad so here is this the same Fowler serotonin that word sounds familiar but I don't know what it means serotonin the earth is like a footstool it's flat it's not flat I proved it scientifically it's not flat it's bumpy and it has corners so it's like a circle within a square that's theoretical that's uh, hearsay it's not a, that's a not admissible in the court. All right, that's what the square and the compass mean now. 
the square and the compass is uh, tools to measure. Luciferian Freemasons know about this. We can't know the distance to heaven because no sinful flesh can leave the earth because of the molten glass sealing with its windows. Obviously God has made it so that man is limited on the earth. Only those who believe the gospel can enter through that glass ceiling after death. Well, um, it's like what we read in John chapter 3. Now I know there's some people that will say, don't read the book of John. It's not for you. It's for the Jews. But it, Jesus does say that no man has ascended up to heaven. All right, Nobody's went to the moon. But he that came down from heaven, even the Son of Man which is in heaven, he's talking about himself. Right? He's the one that ascends to heaven. He has ascended to heaven. And he's came down from heaven. And he is in heaven. He is the Son of Man. So he's talking about himself there. Nobody beside himself is able to do that. Now, uh, to Serotonin's point, when the Lord Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven, we will be lifted up with him. Uh, you know, uh, Will the glass ceiling be removed? I, you know, I don't see any necess um, any, anything in the scripture to support that. But uh, that's beside the point. So nobody's gone to the moon like we read in Isaiah 14. Uh, it's Lucifer who sets his heart in heaven and he thinks he. Uh, let's, let's read this for verse 12. For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high. So this is exactly what we're seeing from the NASA program. They're pretending like they've conquered heaven. That they've got their spaceships in heaven that they've planted their flag on the moon it's insanity they've never went to the moon they've never went to heaven they don't have spaceships roaming around heaven they have you know airplanes some bigger than others yeah but they've not they have they don't have machines going up there flying among the stars guaranteed it says for thou hast said in thine heart it doesn't say he actually they it doesn't say Lucifer actually goes to heaven. It's just in his heart he has ascended to heaven. Just as we read, no man, no man has ascended to heaven. So you can go like, um, we do it this way. We read that David, even David, hey, you think about, uh, you know, this is a difficult one, right? Because people say, oh, my, my loved one that passed away, they're in heaven now. No, they're not. Nobody's in heaven now except for the Lord Jesus Christ God Almighty so the resurrection has not yet happened the resurrection happens on the day of the Lord that's when we are lifted up first the dead in Christ and then those of us that are alive and remain are lifted up to be with the Lord that's when we go up to heaven we don't go to heaven when we die we go to heaven when he returns All right, so when we die uh, the next thing we're, we're going to know is that being lifted up into heaven. So it's in in a way it's not it's not all that wrong, but it is wrong uh, technically speaking. Okay, so if you say your loved one is in heaven now, uh, that's not true. To say that you go to heaven when you die, that's true. All right, in Acts two verse. 34 for David is not ascended into the heavens, but he saith unto himself the Lord said unto my Lord sit thou on my right hand uh, Talking about Jesus, right? So da even David has not ascended to heaven. Of course. There is the big thing. Well, David's baby went to Heaven and the Bible never says that he says uh, uh, I will go to him But he will not come to me or something to that effect what is that? Oh no, it's going to be too hard to find. It's going to be too hard to find. And I don't remember exactly where it's at. So, 
if I could remember anything at all. I was thinking it was in Samuel. And I'm off. Way off, is it? Oh, goodness sakes. Just give me a second here, because this is just going to drive me nuts. What verse is that? 2 Samuel 12. 2 Samuel 12. 2 Samuel 12. I will go to him, but he will not come to me. So now, after his son dies, he can he sort of relaxes a little bit. Uh, oh, what is that word? Right. Oh, wait a second. Did I just see it? Wait a second. Right there. Uh -huh. But now he is dead. Wherefore should I fast? Can I bring him back again? I shall go to him, but he shall not return to me. So that poor little child is in the ground. All right. So I shall go to him into the ground, but he shall not return to me from the ground. So this idea that this is about, you know, David's son going into heaven, it's not there. All right. And it will, it will completely contradict what we just read in Acts 2. Specifically. All right. So, and then I would also contradict what we read, like in First uh, Corinthians uh, four or whatever that is. What is that? Oh, can't remember not then. First Corinthians or First Thessalonians? What did I say? Corinthians? Well, First Corinthians fifteen, First Thessalonians four. Um, you know all this. Everything in the Bible, really. I mean, when the Lord comes in the clouds of heaven, we are risen up to be with the Lord. And that's everywhere. That's the great day of the Lord. That's the day of resurrection, and so on and so forth. So this idea uh, is nonsense. Now, let me see something here just real quickly. Did I completely mess it? Maybe I did. Maybe I went, oh, it's not there, it's not there, it's not there. It's not the first one, it's not down here. But it's the second one. I might have missed it earlier. Anyways, who cares? All right, thanks for that comment. Yep. Yeah, so, uh, good stuff right there. The second one was the wing of a plane. Yeah, the, that stuff with the man, you know, the thrusters. That's ridiculous, huh? Michael Moore. Oh, no, I think I answered this one. Who wrote the song? Uh, it was Griffin something or another. I left the link in uh, in, a, in this uh, Lucifer and Tell Me a Lie. That's the name of the song, Tell Me a Lie. I had to figure it out. Uh, so thanks for the comments. Anyways, uh, if you guys, uh, you know, tell me how the, the audio is. I appreciate that very much. And if you want to expound upon this idea, don't don't read the book of John. Elaborate on that. It wasn't written for you, the believer in the Lord Jesus Christ, so don't even read it. Now, elaborate on that point of view. Alright? <laughs> it's nonsense. It really is. And it drives me nuts when people say stuff like that. Because there's no book in the Bible that is not meant for you. Every book is meant for you. Every word is meant for you. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for construction or for con correction, for instruction in righteousness that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works.